There's something interesting happening to Gen Z pop stars. There's no secret that current artists are not selling like artists did back in the day. Chloe Bailey's debut studio album sold 10k first week. Camila Cabello's last album, Familia, debuted with 27k when her debut self-titled studio album did over 100k first week. Jack Harlow's 2023 Jackman did 33k first week. And we have someone like Normani, who's been teasing her debut solo studio album since 2021 and has been dropping only singles since 2018 and it's obvious that her label fear her album won't sell. In the video I made about Tate McRae, I said the following. What I'm getting is the newer artists can't seem to maintain pop or make it fresh or prevalent as artists like Britney, Katie, or even Justin Bieber did back in their prime. Now, just like a tiger, I've changed my stripes. I don't think Gen Z artists and artists under 30 aren't doing a good job. Pop stars of today are not granted one of the luxuries pop stars in the past had, and that's time. Gen Z acts need time, and someone who is a testament to this is Sabrina Carpenter. For this video, let's talk about how Gen Z pop stars affect the music culture today, compared to artists from previous generations, how fame today kinda screws over artists' careers today, toxic obsession of sales by fans, and how artists like Sabrina Carpenter are doing just fine. long ago. Before the rise of the internet, people actually bought music. The music industry made its profit from selling musical compositions on sheet music, and this analog format dates all the way back to Jesus days, back when people wrote on stones and shit. Cue the medieval music. Ripley's Believe It or Not, albums have never been the music industry's main focus. It's always been driven by singles. Albums, on the other hand, experience its glory from the mid-1960s to the mid-2000s, known as the album era. So yeah, albums was the industry's main export for a relative short period, and the music industry has typically relied on singles for the bulk of its income. In the 1980s, CDs started being used for recording music. By the 2000s, people slowly started to shift away from CDs due to music piracy and the rise of the machines. I mean, the rise of the internet, due to a little pair-to-pair -pair file sharing app called Napster, which is basically the catalyst to the streaming era that we are all in right now. After the music industry recognized record sales started to dip further in the gutters, they tried their best to save it, and the decline slowed down a bit until around 2005 when it just nosedived into the abyss. As other illegal file sharing platforms like LimeWire and New Tech, iPods and the iTunes store for digital downloads started to take over, and if you're wondering what happened to Napster, well, they got the shit sued out of them for copyright infringement. While they were being sued, the damage was already done, the industry was in shambles, and then here comes Steve Jobs with an offer the music industry couldn't refuse. New media kills old media. Today's music fans are extremely obsessed with sales, chart positions, and Spotify streams, causing music internet spaces to become very toxic. We have someone like Saweetie, who got clowned in 2022 after her extended play The Single Life sold only 2,000 copies in its first week. And this is not a full-length project we're talking about. This is an EP. So it was very shocking how many people cared. It was all over the blogs, and you couldn't escape the Saweetie slander because her EP didn't sell, which raises the question, when since people cared about EPs? This is to show how sales obsessed the public is today. I get it, she has millions of followers on Instagram, but haven't we all learned that celebrity Instagram follower count is a scam in itself? In comparison, Billie Eilish's EP and her debut project, Don't Smile At Me, didn't even chart until a month after its release. And let's look at The Voice, Whitney Houston. Her actual debut album, 
with all those good songs, all at once, saving all my love for you, and greatest love of all, debuted at number 166 on the Billboard 200, but the album went on to sell 25 million copies worldwide. Would you clown Whitney Houston right now after hearing her debut album had low sales initially? Sales do not define great artistry, and I'm not saying Saweetie is the best artist or anything, but she's still an artist, and it shouldn't be this serious for these parasocials on the internet. It's weird to be obsessed and clowning people you do not know because their albums flop. And I'm not saying we can't talk about it or have conversations about why it happens, but to think it's cool to say, oh, your album did under 100k first week, so that means you're not a good artist. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Leave that shit to the labels, and even the labels in most cases know if a project will be successful or not prior releasing it. We as fans shouldn't be worried about sales, we should only care about the quality of the work. The other day, Tyla, the very vivacious, sultry South African artist, released her debut studio album and it sold 24k for a week. And people also clowned her on Twitter, saying things like, is this who y'all call the next Rihanna? Side note, there will never be another Rihanna. Anyway, Tyla, a brand new artist, was clowned for selling 24k first week because she had a hit single prior. Give these people time. Did you know Rihanna's debut studio album, Music of the Sun, sold 69k first week? Rihanna's second album, A Girl Like Me, sold 115k first week. And people then were still not impressed. Back in the day, people weren't impressed with selling even 100k. You had to sell like over 300k for people to think you were the shit. That being said, in the 2000s and prior, fans still weren't as obsessed like fans today. Back then, people moved on quickly as sales wasn't that important to fans in the end. It was the artists and their labels who were mainly obsessed. But to this day, Rihanna has never sold 300k in the first week, but most of her albums have cleared the 5 million mark over time. Again, artists need time. Most of these artists we see today being forced on us, we are literally witnessing their development process. And I know people have the perception that artists today do not get artist development but I'ma let y'all on in on a little secret. Most artists rarely get proper artist development, even the old ones. It's actually rare, and I know artists back in the day are more talented, so we automatically think they have gotten artist development before they were tossed on stage. But no, nothing has really changed in the music industry in that regard. In the old days, people like Aretha Franklin and James Brown were honing their craft in church, putting in thousands of hours way before they got a record deal. A lot of these older artists, a lot of them were also child prodigies, getting very humbling experiences before they blew up. Artist development in terms of what most people think it is doesn't exist in my opinion. You have a generation of people now who expect their music for free. In this streaming era, we are going to continue to see a decline in first week sales and sales overall, while streaming numbers increase. One, streaming point is worth less points and billboard ranks songs based on their points purchasing a song or an album and radio play are worth way more points than streaming streaming is easy but it's a lot harder to actually buy a single or an album and as the veil of fame celebrity culture lifts exposing the truth behind a lot of our favorite artists aka dirty diddy people will continue to stream instead of purchasing music in this internet era, artists are getting famous and mass attention too fast before they can even prove their worth, getting expectations placed on them that they aren't ready for or have the capacity to fulfill. They get hyped up because they had a song that went viral before we even know who they are or before the artist knows who they are and the type of artist they want to be. Now, Nicki Minaj is a perfect example of someone who got fame when they were ready. Nicki Minaj worked her ass off, dropping multiple mixtapes, performing live while looking 
busted, but she had the hunger, she had that drive, she had that dog in her. Being exposed to audiences on MySpace and DVDs, struggling before she got her big break, honing and mastering her craft. People don't realize this, but Nicki Minaj got her big break when she was around 27 or 28. And we have Tyla being considered a flop at 22. We are giving these younger artists too much credit and hyping them up way too fast, expecting them to sell like Michael Jackson. Setting up yourself, be disappointed for no real reason because it's not gonna happen or anytime soon with streaming being king and people feeling like it's not worth it to buy music in a traditional traditional sense anymore. Let's look at Ice Spice, someone who definitely had way too many eyes on her from the start of her career, but now people are saying she's a flop because her last single, Gimme a Light, didn't make it on the Billboard Hot 100. Mind you, Ice hasn't even released an album yet, yet a lot of people are calling her trash. Personally, I wouldn't call Ice Spice trash or the song trash. It's like rave type music, so I'll say it's not for everyone. I find it interesting how it's mainly females we hold to this standard, saying they must sell millions, they must sell records. Meanwhile, the men are flopping, but the excitement and clowning is not this widespread and harsh. I'm not saying you should clown men, I'm just saying there is definitely a woman hate thing going on here. Back on topic, there isn't even a Gen Z male pop star present right now. One of the reasons for this is because, honestly, the Gen Z male pop stars aren't making engaging music, kind of mediocre releases, and they don't really get pushed, in my opinion. Like, name one successful mainstream male pop star, that's Gen Z, who not only have a hit single, but albums but albums that sell. I can't name one. Again, you don't need to sell a lot to be a great artist, but I'm just saying. Male Gen Z artists are also flopping, but we don't really hear about it. It's not noteworthy for some reason. When it comes to male pop stars that people talk about, it's still the ones who debuted in the 90s. A lot of people like to say music is dying, and to that, I say no, music is evolving and getting less commodified, causing labels to be in shambles. There has never been a better time to be an artist like today. As you don't need a label, you don't need a manager, an artist today can build themselves from the ground up without the help of a label, and if they do want to get signed, can leverage the fame and fans they garnered without the help of that label and use that as leverage to get a deal that's in their favor. Back in the day, you needed the approval of a gatekeeper. You couldn't just get in, and now you don't. And I think that is an amazing thing because music belongs to everyone. Now, labels are scrambling, that's why they are signing as much artists as possible, and also buying already established artists' catalogs. These artists that go viral fast, not because they care for them, no, they just want a piece of that viral song. If it was only up to the music industry, they rather own every piece of music created. And a lot of these DIY artists thinking it's a good idea, but they can't release when they want to and have to wait for the label to tell them when. Say when. When. The greatest thing a new artist starting out in the mainstream can have today is the ability to put out music and not have a lot of expectations on them to sell. To put out music that doesn't chart, doesn't sell, and not get hackled by the internet or the media for it. An artist who didn't get a lot of these flop conversations surrounding them in turn working in their favor in the long run is Gen Z pop star Sabrina Carpenter. I first discovered Sabrina Carpenter in 2021 when the world was on lockdown due to the pandemic and because Sabrina's song, Skin, was a response to Olivia Rodrigo's global hit, Driver's License. At age 15, Sabrina released her debut studio album, Eyes Wide Open, in 2015. Eyes Wide Open, a teen pop album, sold 12,000 copies in its first week. The following year, she released her second studio album, Evolution, which sold 13,000 copies in its first week. She released two other albums from 2018 to 2019, but there was little mainstream attention. Unless you knew her from Disney, you probably didn't know who she was back then either. In 2021, she signed a deal with Island Records, leaving Hollywood Records. 
Continuing her musical development journey, her breakout hit, Skin, debuted at number 48 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming her first entry on the chart. The singer released a few more singles that were not chart successes, but they showed she had artistic range without doing too much. One of those songs being Fast Time. The artist got her real breakthrough in 2022, following the release of Emails I Can't Send, her fifth studio album. The project sold 18,000 album equivalent units in its first week, and singles Nonsense and the deluxe single Feather really made her presence more visible in the pop space. Nonsense peaked at number 56 on the Hot 100 and has been certified platinum in the US and the latter peaked at number 21. While most online were discussing who's selling and who's not, Sabrina Carpenter was able to do her thing without that much pressure from stand pages in comparison to her peers like Olivia Rodrigo or Tate McRae. Fast forward to present day 2024, Sabrina Carpenter has secured her highest chart single to date with Espresso, which is expected to be on her next album. Espresso peaked at number 4 on the Hot 100. I think the music industry is headed back to the singles game format, and nothing is wrong with that as the music industry was built off singles, not albums, and we all need to understand this and give new artists a chance to release whatever they want and not to hastily put them on a pedestal. Moral of the story, let these artists breathe, stop sweating their ball sack, some of y'all are doing way too much behind your parasocial account on social media, it's not that deep. And if you feel like I'm talking about you, bitch, maybe I am.